Yeah, I need to put on our videos just to say hi. <laughs> nice to see people. Hi, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Joyce. Hi, hi Joyce. <laughs> hi. Hi, Jill. Huh. So we've got, wow, we've got literally Rhodes and UCT people so far. And we've got Irene from Kenya. And we have Jakob from Emerge Africa. Let's see who else uh, joins us. And Celia is from so Vegas. Yes. Yep. She's also a, a colleague, obviously, we know Cecilia. The only name I actually don't know on this list is Jared Fitcher. Oh, needless day. Hi, we too. At least we can tell our UCT colleagues and from elsewhere in the country that we finally had some rain yesterday and this morning. Um, yes, it's um, it is to us rain is <laughs> such a blessing. Um, Good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Hi, where to? Afternoon. Hi, where to? <laughs> hi, hi, Irene. How are you? Oh, great. A bit hot here. <laughs> if, if you need some Is rain it? and some sunshine, I can send it. <laughs> Let's swap the countries. <laughs> oh, that would be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we start? I think so. I uh, believe I Nicola, you are muted. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. So welcome everyone. Um, today we've got uh, Vainan van der Volt from my colleague from Rhodes University joining us and presenting about Wikimedia projects. So Vainand is the head librarian of technical services at Rhodes University Library. He holds a master's in IT from the University of Pretoria and his interests are leadership for innovation, digitization and digital curation open educational resources and the semantic web and how it affects library related technologies. And Vaynard also serves on the Wikimedia Africa board um, and the Library and Information Association of South Africa Executive Committee. Um, so just for our colleagues who might be watching the recording or who don't know Vaynard, I see at the moment we are joined by many fellow, um, there are many libraries colleagues from not only Rhodes but from UCT and other institutions as well. And I'm sure you all know Vainant. So yeah, over to you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. And thank you so much for the colleagues who's uh, willing to listen to me again and all the new colleagues that hasn't heard me talk about this before. Um, we were laughing just before this uh, because Ingrid is on board as well. Um, she's saying that, oh, people would say, oh, there's that woman again speaking about things. Ingrid, and I'm sure that my Rhodes colleagues feel the same, um, but I'm glad to see Jill and Wetu, et cetera, here as well. Um, and I want this to be a, an open conversation, uh, although I've got, I've got, I think I've got three hours, if I remember correctly. I've, um, no, I think it's about an hour or 40 minutes. I won't keep it too long, but I want an open conversation because what I would like to do afterwards is also to actually create a framework. Um, and the framework will serve as how do people actually approach institutions of higher learning to start looking at uh, embedding some of the Wikim uh, Wikimedia projects into their everyday tasks. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let me start. Uh, this is the abstract, the, the formal abstract, but I thought, you know what, we haven't got that much time. So I, I wrote an alternative one that says universities, universities need to integrate Wikimedia. That's the bottom line. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should have asked, can everybody hear me well? Because uh, yesterday I know somebody had a problem hearing me and said I'm very soft. Uh, no, I'm everything... hearing you all right. Great, great. Uh, other colleagues, maybe let us know in the chat. Mm. Well, I can't see the chat, so uh, Nicola, I assume one of you would be yep. um, ad uh, admitting people as well and also uh, watching the chat on, on okay, the side. Okay, Irene says loud and clear. And so does yeah, Joyce says she can hear you well. 
Great, great. Um, cool. And at any given time, you can interrupt me. I've got no problems with that. Um, in fact, I actually appreciate that. All right. Now, to start off with, um, I wanted to ask just two things. If you can do in a chat, if you can tell me what specifically, what's your interest? Why did you want to actually attend this session? Um, that I can get some idea, uh, please. Um, who am I talking to and why? What's the reason behind it? If you can just type something in the chat or if somebody actually wants to, to, to say something, they can unmute themselves and just tell us more about why this is of specific interest to them. Trying to find a chat box. Nicola, can you see anybody typing or? Yes, I can relay for you. So just from myself, you know, I know about Wikimedia. Don't know about projects. Joyce says, have no idea. She says, no, don't know what Wikimedia is. Would like to know how it could improve my teaching. Uh, she then says, um, get better acquainted with the process of editing and referencing. And Cecilia says, I know nothing about this. I want to know more. Uh. All right, so that, that gives me a very good idea that uh, it's a wide spectrum. Um, so welcome to the session. I think it's perfect. Um, then I've, uh, I think I've, I've managed to create this presentation at least to fit everybody's needs. Um, I want you just to, for a moment, reflect, because most of us work at institutions of higher learning. Um, I think actually everybody most probably on this, this uh, that's attending works at institutions of higher learning or uh, universities. And the core, one of the core reasons for universities, if you were to think about it, if you just reflect on that, um, it has to do with, with uh, universities' place in the knowledge economy. And that is to do with how do universities uh, and their position, uh, how do they position themselves and the position they take in terms of being at the frontier of knowledge. Then also the university's duty to pushing the boundaries of knowledge um, the pursuit of knowledge and the preservation and dissemination of knowledge. So the core function of a university is closely tied with the knowledge uh, ecosystem. And I think we tend to forget that we, we, we see universities are as, as um, schools and just to get children through the, uh, children, students through the process for them to walk out with degrees, but that is not the core function of university. It's about the dissemination, you know, creating this in incredible wealth of information and to make, make it accessible. And I just want to point out, you can see my uh, presentation, I hope. Um, now imagine Wikimedia Foundation, it's imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. And immediately that says that Wikimedia and universities actually share the same vision in terms of knowledge being central uh, for societal uh, development, transformation and growth. Um, and I don't think that, that for me, the two just that it, it's impossible to split the two anymore at this point in time. And I hope through today's sessions that you can see clearly how one can collaborate between the two. You can all see my screen, I suppose. Nobody said anything else. Um, no, we can we can see your screen. Great, great. I'm going to skip some of the slides. Um, all right, maybe I should just tell you something about the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, Wikipedia, and everybody knows Wikipedia. Wikipedia is the product, it's one of the projects, and it's one of those projects that actually started um, before the actual foundation or the original, the, the entity uh, was born. So the Wikimedia came after Wikipedia, but within the Wikimedia Foundation, you have a number of projects of which one is Wikipedia. And <clears throat> I think I do talk about it later on. Established in 2001, and it's grown to 12 projects. So we talk about Wikimedia projects quite often. And that is to display uh, an array of services associated with the Wikimedia Foundation, of which Wikipedia is probably um, the central one that everybody knows. But there's a number of other ones, and I'm not going to touch on, on most of these today, actually. I'm going to only touch on three, I think. Um, so you've got Wiki Voyage, Wiki, Wiki, uh, Wiktionary, Wiki Quote, Wiki Books, Wiki Source. Uh, Wikimedia Commons, Wikiversity, Wikispecies, Wikidata, Wikinews, and some additional uh, Wikimedia projects. So these are the core project, uh, projects uh, as part of this um, foundation. Uh, oh, I can see the chat now. 
I would like to know if there's copyright issues. All right, uh, that's a good question, actually. Just please remind me to answer all questions later on. Um, all right, um, all right. Wikimedia Foundation, uh, it's owned by everyone. It's not owned by the foundation. The sister projects are literally owned by everyone and anyone in the world who's willing to contribute. And this might be slightly small, um, but just to show you that Wikimedia, uh, Wikipedia actually um, has consistently ranked amongst the top 15 most used sites in the world. It used to be number five, number six, about last year, I think. But the interesting thing to notice is that it's the first and only of the top 15 that is actually a, um, a resource. The rest are portals. And you will notice, for instance, video sharing portals, social networking, internet services like your search engines, and interesting enough, online shopping. Um, so it's also the only of those fifth, top 15 that's actually not for profit. That says a lot about uh, you know, the, the nature of the foundation and what they do in terms of this specific project. Um, so yes, Google search, etc. we all know why they are top, um, but it's good to see Wikipedia. But it, it, in putting it in figures, it's a different story. And this is the next page. And again, I'm sorry if it's a bit small. Now, this is just Wikipedia, the English Wikipedia. There's a number of languages, I'll get to it now. The page views this year alone for the English Wikipedia has been 166 billion page views. That's a monthly average of 16 billion page views. And I would like you just to reflect on that for a second because the figures that we're talking about, the numbers, it's enormous. And I'm just, I, this morning I was sitting and I was reflecting on our institutional repository. We get happy if we get 10,000 visits a year. The Wikimedia Foundation and Wikipedia specifically in this case, it averages 6,172 visits per second. Over more than a billion unique devices per month, more than 50 million articles, available in more than 300 languages, and there's 119 plus chapters, user groups, and um, communities of best practice. Um, but 16 billion visits a month this is incredible, and this is, and, and it says a lot about uh, as as humans, as as uh, the, how we use, how we interact with Wikimedia, um, with the various projects. So, just as a matter of fact, I just want to find out what is your institution's opinion about Wikipedia, uh, the general opinion. If you can just put it in the chat box. Yeah, Vaynant, we actually had a question um, maybe related to this, is how to cite it for research. Um, ah, and that's a good question. I'll just share as well. I mean, I know when I said, you know, was tutoring, we would always have to tell students, don't use Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> so I think they, yeah, Cecilia says, wary to suspicious. Um, <laughs> Suzanne yeah. says, a foreign concept. Yeah, the, uh, getting back to the citation, um, as with any Wikipedia, don't cite an Wikipedia, don't cite Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a portal to knowledge and it is meant, it's designed in such a way that it, that it provides you with additional resources. You wouldn't, you would not cite Wikipedia. Um, and it's not because of the quality, it's because it's a portal to knowledge. Uh, there might be qualitative issues as well at times, but I would rather then go and find additional resources in as much as I'm talking to librarians here as well. You would not cite your OPEC. You would not cite your discovery tool. You would not cite your search engine, Google, for instance. There's for some reason, a perception was created that Wikipedia, uh, and I'm getting to it later on as well. It's got this bad reputation. You can't trust it. And I think, I'm sorry, but I, half the things in the internet I can't trust. It's not Wikipedia. In fact, Wikipedia is most probably one of the most authoritative resources you can get because of the, the citations that's added. Um, because if the information is not designed, and people say, yes, anybody can edit Wikipedia. But I don't think of, you know, yes, there's vandalism at times, but in general, most people who edit on Wikipedia are actually not, well, in some cases, obviously experts in their fields, 
but it's dedicated staff, um, dedicated uh, passionate people, not dedicated in terms of their jobs, that does the editing. And that takes a long time. In as much as you would do anything else with um, you know, creating an article, creating a, a book chapter or something like that. And that's how people contribute because the, 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 the wealth of knowledge comes from a crowd, you know, it's crowd sourced. So it's, it's a crowd based wisdom. And it's actually quite a stringently peer reviewed environment currently. Um, you can do an edit. Uh, it takes, takes a bit longer on English uh, Wikipedia. But yesterday, I actually added a new article, and it was edited with, with under two minutes. Somebody else edited a specific aspect of, of that article. So the peer review is actually quite stringent in many ways. And one also has to ask, who are your peers? We come from, and this is a problem I have with universities, actually, is that we, are, we would like to be perceived as the only holders of knowledge. And that's where I think people started um, not seeing the university as being part of the society, but as being a, an elite aspect of the society. Nowadays, everybody's your peers, everybody has access to knowledge, a specific librarians where we have access to the wealth of, of information. Uh, we've got the means to assess resources, and we need to build on Wikipedia. So that was a very long answer to something that, that was very short. Um, but I'm going to speak to also how to use Wikipedia and other projects within your teaching uh, environment, if that'll help. Did that answer the question? Sorry, I can't, I can't find my chat box, actually. Yeah, we were having some interesting discussions about how we use Wikipedia. Um, I was sharing, you know, I use it as a dummies guide, you know, get a quick overview about something mm. and then reading further. And yeah. Cecilia says she also does that. Um, yeah. Then Celia said she uses the citations a lot. Ingrid oh, noted good. that it is the most open peer reviewed um, and that she uses the references quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, for many, it, it's the first place to check, Neil said. Just yes, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to that as well. Um, so the conversation tells me exactly that the presentation I think is structured correctly. So let me move on and you can um see what i've done uh wikimedia and universities i'm going to talk about teaching and learning specifically and then reach research separately and then also about africanization and decolonization later on now this image completely for me just illustrates exactly how not just students but academics etc we all um behave we expect people to follow the rules and i see that that the big uh, paving as what academics tell us to do, uh, what people want to do, but even the professors now use Wikipedia and it creates a different path because people take a shortcut. This is exactly what you were referring to, Nicola, is that people use it as a starting point to do a lot of their work. Um, and it's, it's actually very good. Um, oops, that's a long way. All right, so there's a number of studies that's been done and specifically pertaining to, to student use, information retrieval uh, in terms of student use, but also later on academics use. So professors, how do they use Wikipedia? But um, that one study was actually brought into question because the one professor said he's not willing to admit that he uses Wikipedia. Um, so there's, there's an honesty uh, challenge when it comes to the, the, the high academics. Um, but the students are, are, I would assume, fairly straightforward. And as somebody just said, I think Nicola, you said it in somebody else as well, it is the best place to start your initial research. And as a university library, we, for instance, we have starter packs on the, the EDS discovery platform. And I've always wondered, why do people use the starter packs on your discovery layer when you have the starter pack actually on Wikipedia already? Um, a lot of students use it for clarification. And I just wanna point out in the gray box, if you can't read it, if it's a small print, um, I'm just going to admit the reason. It says there, I think usually uni readings are overcomplicated and do not explain things very straightforwardly. Wikipedia explains concepts clearly so that I am more able to understand the uni readings. So you can immediately see how it fits um, into the, the, the learning environment and the clarity it brings because the language is often, um, it is, I mean, yes, I could, uh, your articles are very much structured in an academic sense, but the language uh, makes it more accessible for most people. And then 
I think Cecilia said this, bibliographic resource, yes, go to the citations and use it from there. So it is becoming a replacement for the library's discovery tools. Um, and in many ways, I would actually prefer that. And then also one comment was assessment cramming because Wikipedia works as like, you know, like very much like a summary um, of certain thing, or certain concepts. What was of interest was some of the studies also pointed to the variances between gender. Men tend to use Wikipedia more often than women. I think it's because men might be not as clever as women um, or they're lazy, I'm not sure. The academic level obviously has an impact, age has an impact, and the subject discipline also has an impact in terms of use. But I'm not gonna go into the details of this, but just to point out this, and there's many studies done um, to go and have a look at those studies. Uh, oops, something happened here. Good. So what should academic institutions do? Well, first of all, I plead to support the use of Wikipedia. Um, educators should provide students with more training and, and assessing online information. That's the one thing, Joyce Suri, you've asked about this. And it's useful and necessary to incorporate Wikipedia into the academic curriculum. And I will explain some of the, um, how some of the benefits work in this case. There was one case study, and there's a number of case studies. I'm just, I just use, use very specific ones. Uh, this case study was called Using Wikipedia, a scholar redraws academic lines by including it in a syllabus, which I really enjoyed about this one. This, this is a, a, a professor, um, He's teaching sociology and specifically socio sociological theory and uh, theorists. And he started, instead of fighting with Wikipedia, he said, well, I'm gonna do this differently. In the class, he had each student adopt a Wikipedia page. They had to tell him which page they adopted. They had to do a printout of that page. Then they were, had to go and they had to review the content. Now, this is where it gets interesting. In, in the review of the content, they had to interact with the content and they, it actually meant that they spend more time reading up because they have to very much like you would do with a normal essay, but they now had to start judging and they had to see things differently. So they started seeing things from an academic perspective in terms of how objective the material is, how neutral it is, um, is it the writing style academically, etc. And they had to upgrade the content to academic standard and then they had to submit the before and after for assessment. And what came out of this. Now, that, that was just one part of it, and I think that was what the professor actually wanted, but it was two spin-offs. First of all, a number of the students actually entered into dialogue with the page owners, who often were experts on that field, and they entered into dialogue because they, I think they could, they called net citizens. Uh, it's just easier to speak to people over the internet, and the evidence of impact was immediately visible. Um, in terms of, of the impact, and I'll get, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I'll talk about the impact just now as well. Another case study was University of Edinburgh, um, where they had to, to uh, as part of the assessing students through OER creation, they had to actually edit live Wikipedia pages. Um, then there's another famous case study from student to professor, I said famous, I uh, saw it yesterday, thank you Ingrid for sending this to me. And uh, this student, what was very interesting, what this person said, it's hard to imagine a more powerful way to further the public's understanding of law and justice than by empowering law students to improve Wikipedia articles about those laws. And for, for me, what it says is that through interacting with the actual resource, it's not about reading anymore. It's about interacting with that resource and the critical awareness that, that, that goes with the interaction. I think that is what's changing. So the benefits derived from all these studies First of all, it promotes active learning. Students are accountable to global audience. Um, it's not just an essay they have to hand into the tutor. They get thrown into the dustbin afterwards. They get a sense of effort that's not going to waste. They enjoy it, it's fun. It's a different way of doing things. They are, uh, most students nowadays are, are fairly um, able to work in uh, wiki environments. Then there's development and enhancement of communication skills, and that has to do with both the verbalization, expression of, of concepts, language skills, uh, but also to say, for instance, to, to, to state something in a neutral way, uh, objective way. Um, and then development and enhancement of information literacy levels, 
content discussions because they started talking to the, the lecturer about certain things. So the critical thinking skills um, was, uh, or at least it, it, the critical thinking um, skills was, uh, was facilitated through this process. And they collaborated both with their the, the various, um, you know, with their peers in the class, but also with people external to the institution. As I said earlier on, with some of, some of the, the, the page owner, not page owners, but the people who are mostly responsible for certain pages. And there's a contribution to the global knowledge ecosystem. So even at undergrad level, a student can now actually give back to the world. And more so when you think in terms of contextualized and localized knowledge, where a study would focus on documents, like let, let's call it what um, let me think of, of uh, some of the local laws that will not be necessarily available on the internet or known about in other countries. Now it can be done because they will have to write it up. Uh, so it's contextualized in terms of the environment we find ourselves in. Localized might be in terms of language um, specifically, and I'll, I'll get to languages later on as well. <clears throat> so there's a wiki education as well, and this helps students make a real world impact through their work. Wiki education connects higher education to Wikipedia. And there's a number of things that, that, that um, uh, Wikipedia does to enable uh, tutors, lecturers, et cetera, to actually um, you know, help them with these assignments, including, for instance, creating and expanding an article, translating an article, creating new media, et cetera. Um, Joyce, I hope this answers your question in terms of at least you know, from, from a practical perspective in terms of how it's being used in the classroom. Again, this is just one of many examples of what's being done um, out there. Right, are there any questions at this point in time before I go on to Wikipedia and research? Um, yes, Bainant, I think there was one, um, and it was around the use of, I think, wiki tools. So I know back in the day, wiki tools within an LMS were quite popular. Yeah. And how that is different to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So that, that is within the LMS, sorry, if I understand correctly, how does the, 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 the use of wikis within LMS differ from Wikipedia? Yeah, so many people are, I think, accustomed to the old school, you know, wikis. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think I'm wondering how, how it's different. All right, I think the answer lies very much in what, what we just stated here. Students are no longer passive consumers of knowledge. Even if you use wikis on, uh, uh, on, on a LM, uh, learning management system, and, and we've done it quite recently with University of Victoria, um, it's still limited to a very small group, and it doesn't have a social impact. And your your the, the awareness on the student side is, uh, you know, what my it's still for my for the purpose of handing an assignment to my to the tutor, you know, get marks, etc. But students can now create the knowledge, and and part of that co-creation process allows them to take pride in what they do. Um, I think they think at a different level because they know that what they're going to do is visible to the rest of the world. We had the same argument, I remember, when we started with uh, digitizing theses and putting them online. Um, we, oh, no, no, the thesis must be kept inside the institution. You cannot, you cannot expose the institution, the quality of the institution uh, to the world. I said, well, maybe if we expose the quality of the, the academic um, levels at the institution, then maybe it'll increase. And it happened. As far as I understood, the, the quality of theses and dissertation increased substantially since they've been placed online because of the awareness of the global audience. Um, but yes, the, the, I mean, uh, there are a number of wikis still used in LMSs, um, but it doesn't add to the value in terms of contributing to the wider knowledge. If you can, if you can take it from that that wiki uh, that's in, limited to, to that LMS or limited to that group, and then place it into Wikipedia, great. If you want to do that as a pre-assessment uh, process um, for marking marking purposes and for quality assurance, by all means, and then you can do it, you know, just as long as you take it over to Wikipedia as well. All right, there's a number of um, uh, statements. I'm just going to, if there's any, but Nicola, you'll tell me if there's any questions. I'm going to continue. The next section of my presentation has to do with Wikipedia and research. Now, these are actual terms used originally for Wikipedia, Wikipedia, responsible scholarship, Wikipedia more dangerous than crack. 
these are all quotes that I found. Um, and funny enough, most of them in America, and also interesting enough, mostly people in higher education, which was interesting in one politician. So Craig was particularly one politician. This person you can quote. Um, Wikipedia and its sister projects are not just useful for supporting the research program. It is indeed a fundamental and indispensable aspect of research dissemination. And I think you know who wrote that quote, <laughs> but please, uh, do, you can <laughs> find, you can quote me, I've got no problem with that. But it's, to me, it's, I cannot see that it's separated anymore. And hopefully what I'm gonna show you now will, will sort of also blow you in terms of what is actually being done behind the scenes in many cases. And if some of you who are not librarians can also think in terms of what value does your library render in terms of research dissemination, let me get you, let me provide you with a glimpse of this. First of all, um, I think Joyce is uh, waiting to get uh, be admitted. All right, Wikipedia and research. What can Wikipedia do for your research? It increases the visibility of institutional research outputs. It increases the visibility of the researcher itself. It redirects traffic back to university sites and it allows for information repackaging. And this is a core, for me, that last point, it allows for information repackaging. Um, for, for me, it's very important because as librarians, we've, we've sort of been bystanders in the, in the information communication uh, processes. But now we can, we, we, we can use our skills to repackage information in such a way that it fits with the curriculum, that it fits with, um, you know, what people want to know. And I'll show an example of this uh, just now. But another thing is, and at the bottom you'll see, uh, I don't know if anybody knows uh, or anybody uses Altmetrics, about Altmetrics. Altmetrics is the, the alternative um, citation analysis tool as opposed to formal citations. Altmetrics looks at your social footprint. So Altmetrics will look at an output, a journal article, data set, et cetera, and will investigate and identify a citation with and then tracks the mentions in the source. Wikipedia is one of those sources. So even the fact that I just cite, and for instance, I just add a URL, a road URL to a citation that's already in Wikipedia means that that researcher now has, or and that research output now has a footprint when it comes to altmetrics. And in order to be considered for any altmetric assessment, you need to be mentioned at least once in order for them to actually uh, be able to track the footprint going forward. Um, so that's one way of also addressing some of the, the uh, lesser known items and, and also boost your altmetrics if, 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 if you, uh, although I don't want to be sound competitive, it's not about being competition, but it, it's about at least altmetrics as a way of measuring how visible our research and our res researchers are. And yeah, I'm going to use Rhodes University case as a case study. Um, what we've done, the credibility of an article on Wikipedia can be increased through the addition of citations. That's obvious. Um, citation quality can be increased by adding additional information. Uh, there's an example of cicadas that I used. And uh, we have a professor that's uh, unknown to many. He's actually an expert on cicadas as well. And I only realized this when I actually read the article on cicadas. Um, and I, there were five or six of his um, you know, works cited. So I added our URLs, but it adds value to the citation. So when people use it, like um, somebody said earlier on, if you want to go and have a look at the references, you actually can go straight through to an actual um, research output uh, on the institutional repository. So literally, as I, again, I'm going to reiterate this, uh, Wikipedia is most probably um, apart from Google Scholar, it's the, for me, it, it's, there's no equal when it comes to a um, research portal um, or information portal for that matter. And then articles published in different formats are brought together. Now for this, I'm going to actually going to uh, go out of the presentation and I'm extremely, extremely proud of this specific uh, page. And people might have seen me talk about this before. Um, you can all see the wiki page, Joshua Muapelua, I assume. Right. Very, very little was known about this person, except in some obscure musicology uh, items he was mentioned. Um, 
for many reasons. One needs to reflect on the historic reasons for why some people were excluded from mainstream um, uh, materials, research materials, and also the time that he was actually alive, 1980 to 1982. Um, also, the fact that he hailed from Lesotho, he was a Lesotho composer. Um, so even you know in a small country like Lesotho, how serious the world is not going to look at uh, Mr. Muapelua. Yet, I real I I what I started doing was I looked at various articles as published by the African um, sorry published by Island the National Library of African Music in African Music the journal, and I wanted to link the article about Joshua to uh, Wikipedia. And I realized there's no page. And more so, we just received the same year a thesis um, on this person. I thought, you know what, this is odd um, because you've got these separate containers with information. How do you bring all of this together? And this is again where the skills of both academics and the librarians are critical to repackaging the information. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to write up this, and I'm going to find everything I can about. Joshua, and I did. I eventually got uh, even information from Vitz, the archive, um, and I started writing. I thought, you know what, again, it's a case of who are my peers in this case? Well, if somebody wants to improve on this, by all means, they're most welcome. In fact, that's exactly what you want them to, to do, is to go to this page and improve on it for the next person to read. Um, so you're, you're, you don't have to be a professor in order to write these articles. You just need to be passionate and you have to get, have access to the, the information resources and you just need to be able to write. And this is the bottom line is that from there, people, other people can also build um, on this. And I'm not a musicology expert, definitely not on, on, on choral music, but it was most probably the most fun I've had in a long time that year when I wrote this. And I'm extremely proud of this, not because I did it, but because this, for me, the value was proven, and I'll show you something just now. And also for another reason, it just so happens that his great-grandson great, great is my daughter's boyfriend, and that's just the chance. And we didn't know it at that stage when I was working on this. Um, but that's another story. So here we have the references. There we've got you know, your old composing uh, Moses editions, and I found this on the shelf. Um, there's a letter to Jones that was I uh, so African racing relations that had a letter. This is the article in the publication uh, African Music that's published by University of uh, sorry, by Rhodes University, and another article, and the thesis is someplace African Music. The thesis is someplace here in between. Right, but irrespective. So I wanted to bring all of this together, but there was no single point. And this is, I'm gonna to speak to Africanization later on as well. The fact is nobody else is gonna do it. If, if we don't do it, nobody else is gonna do it for us. And I started writing this as humbling experiences. Um, it says here, my internet connectivity is unstable, so I just hope you can all hear me still. Now, I'm not sure how many people knew about Mr. Muapilua before this. Uh, and I just want to point out, it's been translated into Afrikaans and into uh, uh, Egyptian Arabic. This is not by me. Um, sorry, the Afrikaans one I did, but also uh, the Egyptian Arabic, obviously, it was not me. And I just want to show you, because I'm also intrigued now. Oh, yes, that's the other reason. Um, as a head of technical services, one thing that I'm acutely uh, interested in is how does the semantic web work? And what are the elements? The semantic web works on the concept of concepts um, that's linked, but you have to express the concept within a specific context. And that's done through identifiers. And here you can see the identifiers built in already. Now, for those librarians out there, there's also a script. If you look at the right-hand side, there's a script here that I added to this page, and I can now click on this. Maybe I should do this, resources in your library. I click on it, 
And in this case, you should take me through to my catalog. Well, there's a forward to libraries and I can go through and I can go and choose my catalog. Uh, maybe just for, for everybody's interest. Um, where is South Africa? Uh, there's a number, UCT is, Ingrid, UCT is not listed here. But anyway, let me click on Rhodes University. So sorry, I do I do know. I do know. <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> all right, there you have it. So the student can use the uh, Wikipedia as a starting point for his research. You'll get to know the basics of the topic. Be able to go through the, the citations, but more so if the script is part of that page, you can click on it and it'll take him back, depending on his configuration, obviously, to his very own environment. In this case, this is the discovery layer for Rhodes University. And from there, you can go and actually place a hold. This is a music score. Um, but I just want to have a point out, there's the identifier that made this available, uh, um, that enabled this interlocking uh, integration. Um, and this is available at Island Books. I just want to go back to the original. Um... All right. And you had an interesting question, Bainant, which is how many views has your page had? Oh, that's a stunning, stunning question. I'm going to go there. I uh, just remember how to get there. Um, what links here? Download printable site, page information, bloated. Um, there is a way to see it. Sorry, Very can statistics. I just can I just sorry can I just comment? If you scroll back up, Oops. um, it'll it it. It's not this it, one. It's not it's not that one. Um, you should you should be in fact be able to see it from your from that page if you just x out that community wish list survey. You should have no 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 sorry right at the top right at the top view history that that, that read edit it's there it's the the stats are there. The the view I've history will give you the, the it's. It's 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 there. Um, um, there we go, and you should be able to find page statistics. Can you see external tools? Blah 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 blah. Page statistics. Page Got it. views. Thank you, Ingrid. I knew there was a way to get views, it. Yeah, if you click if you click on page views, you'll see how many page how many views they've 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 been. All right, I clicked on it. Um, This gives you the general statistics for for um, editing, etc. Uh, then I have to go down if I'm right. At, yeah, it. right at the. In fact, right at the top, if you, you you can see, you'll see that there's a thing that says page views. Um, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. There. I think that was a very interesting question. Uh, maybe I should have hidden the page uh, just to ask how many people you think would have been. Uh, interested in this, let me take this to from the start. Um, dates, dates, dates. It was this one custom, uh, all time from when I created this page up to now. It's had 4,701 page views. Does that answer your question? Ah, I get a daily average of two page views. All right. That's so fascinating because it's quite a very niche interest. Yeah, um, but can you imagine on going back to, to Joyce's question, um, how do we contribute through wealth of knowledge? And one of the things is to be actually able to ask your students to do specific essays, write it up, put it out live, and then contribute. And I'm going to talk about Africanization later on. But as you said, this is a very, very uh, niche area. Uh, you know, choral music, um, pursuit to choral music for, for uh, no, to be more specifically, yet it's got all of these hits. But there's a lot of other informa interlinking information at the back, um, which might increase the visibility of this. But thank you for that question. I think that was, that was really a good question. Uh, just let me go back to my presentation. Uh, right. All right. Yes. So this is about Wikipedia and research. And through that process, so at least 4,100 people 
have now come across an article that cite two of our uh, journal articles and one thesis. And most probably would go there because it's mentioned in the citation. So I'm not doing this only to, to expose our research, but also to bring everything together and repackage it in a way that's now permanent, that people can contribute to. You can imagine we couldn't contribute before to Britannica or any of those encyclopedias to mostly to, to books. Uh, you can't, after the book has been published, contribute to it. So this is also, for me, one of the key features of Wikipedia because information has become dynamic. Um, and it will grow as more information is made accessible. Right. Then that's that was Wikipedia. I'm going to go into one of the other uh, extra projects, which is Wikimedia Commons and Research. And this is why we are just used images to enhance articles. And what it does, it allows for referrals back to the Rhodes University sites. And also, I loaded one specifically to have a teaser effect because how do you get your collections out there? So I loaded one image that one image is part of more than 228 uh, images in one collection and so i call it the teaser effect so people know that you've got something they will go back to your repository through the the link and go and see what else is there that you might have so it's another way to expose a collection without obviously having to load all the information then there's one image i loaded purely for experimental reasons and another reason i'm going to go there um, this is how, what it looks like, but I'm going to actually go there and there's a reason for this. As librarians, as users of, and I'm talking academics as well, as users of the institutional repository, it's always been a very flat stru structure uh, in terms of the repositories. But I want you to have a look at the Wikimedia Commons. Now, now the one um, thing about Wikimedia Commons is only accessible items in terms of certain uh, Creative Commons licenses can be added. Um, where was it? I saw it earlier on. Sorry, I was playing around earlier on. And now I've changed the, I've changed the view. That's what I've done. Uh, Dino, use this file. Let me see if that's it. No, that's not it. Was it information? Use this file. No. Sorry, I keep on clicking things, and that's why um, I go out of things when I shouldn't go out of them. Um, was it this? Oh, yes. I wanted to, to, to point out that um, our structures, institutional repository structures, are very flat. The information is limited. Through Wikimedia and Wikimedia, Wiki, uh, specifically the Wikimedia Commons, what happens is that the information gets exposed at a whole different uh, level. Here I have, never mind the source, and remember that source points back to the repository. The author attributes, everything is here, but you also have the location, the camera location. Uh, so this would be the actual uh, coordinates where this map, um, I mean the coordinates of the map, and that's why I worked with one GIS expert to, be, and to help me with this although I still don't understand how, is, how it's being done and something that we need to actually um, get more acquainted with. Um, but there's a lot of in, more information and there's a file usage in other wikis. So on wikipedia.org, you've got Ken Hart. And if you, if you go to that Wikipedia page, you'll have a link back to this map because it, it as I said earlier on, the semantic web works on uh, the expression of concepts and, and expressing the relationships between concepts. And also the usage on Wikidata, that Q number is a Wikidata number. And I'll, I'm going to show you um, what that means as well and what's the potential for research output um, uh, going forward. Let me just get back to this. Um, right, now going to Wikidata and research. Wikidata serves as a semantic hub linking uh, millions of concepts with relevant authority listings. And the use of Wikidata at Rhodes includes the expression of entities and the variance of expression to support entities that are known within the Rhodes University environment. So I focused on some of the, those, those researchers that were um, part of the Rhodes environment, like Amy Guillemot in this case. And then you can see a lot of the bibliographic descriptions, uh, for in, including the, the VIAF ID, which we didn't embed in our metadata to create a link between the OPAC and our OPAC in the semantic web which will take a person either through to the um, information or at least give you, uh, if you've got a semantic search, 
in allow you to see all aspects of that specific concept and variances to it. So catalogers even get involved in this process without really knowing it at this point in time. Then this is another interesting one. This was the wiki species, and this uh, speaks more to the, the, the obviously the spear sciences, obviously. And citing Rhodes University research material to support taxonomical validity also increases potential use of set materials. An example of this was the parrot, parrotfish article, um, Scarus persicus, and uh, which also now, if you go to this taxonomy, you'll be able to link through from the taxonomy straight through to the actual article on our repository. And this is a link between a taxonomy and the institutional repository, um, which is just incredible. So you, you can understand the, the exceptional exposure that the research actually gets, the research outputs and the researcher through using the various projects associated with Wikimedia. And there you have it. And this is the entry, Scardus Pacticus. And you can see, um, you can see the name, you can see the various uh, identity numbers, now scientific numbers, which I don't know much about, but the references, there you have it. And if you click on this link, you'll go through to the institutional repository where this article, what's uh, is now digitally available. And again, in as, as institutions in terms of open science, uh, it is important to ensure that we make our uh, research outputs uh, not just accessible, but also in such a way that, it, that, it's, that it's discoverable. Um, and this is an open access article. Um, it was, uh, this was 1983, and that's part of that open access movement. It's, it's, for me, it's insufficient to talk about certain things without putting certain things in place to support it in, you know, completely. Um, just putting up an article on the institutional repository, it's already a step in the right direction but it's not complete. We need to do other things with that open access um, article eventually, and this is part of it. All right, before I go on to Africanization and decolonization, uh, I'm not sure if there's any questions or inputs from anybody. Yeah, folks, we're just sharing. It's so incredible that your page has, you know, so many views and Ingrid um, said, you know, you should see those page views on the COVID entries. Yeah, I'm sure those <laughs> must be crazy. Yes. Um, so, sorry, Nicola, if I can chip in here and just say, oh. if you have a look, if you, you you kind of go back and you look, in, I mean, things have been tightened up and they've they've moved stuff around, but you can you can actually go back sort of from December at December 2019, and you can actually see the increased views. I, I mean. Mm. Things happen, and 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 people look to Wikipedia, look you know, head straight onto Wikipedia to look for for articles on those on those on those mm. on those topics. Um, and um, yeah, um, the <laughs> the COVID um, ones were very interesting. <laughs> you actually reminded me of something um, that was not on my sorry, in my presentation, you mentioned specifically people go to Wikipedia. Uh, but what people don't realize is because of, of, the, of the, 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 um, the link configuration behind the Wikimedia Foundation projects, quite often you'll find that the Wikipedia entry is the first one. But also if you configure your, if you package your information correctly, you'll find, and in this case, you'll see on the right hand side, the Wikipedia information from the info box. So that info box part of the, 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 the Wikipedia entry is critical to ensure that this is the first view end users see. So if anybody across this world now searches for Mr. Moapelua, they'll find this article and they're just two steps away from here, from the landing page, they step two steps away, two clicks away to actually accessing our resources at Rhodes University. Um, Pertaining to Joshua. I think that's incredible. Sorry, um, Ingrid, you reminded me to, 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 to about this. Right. Now, one of my favorite hobbies or points of discussion, Africanization, decolonization. Um, I put the word and decolonization. I don't like the word decolonization because that means for me, it, it's sort of, uh, uh, it's a very destructive word. Whereas Africanization to me is very empowering. And we, 
and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I might tread on toes here, but I'm going to say some things. South Africans, I'm not sure about the rest of the, 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 the continent, we are very good to mostly complain about the lack of knowledge when it comes to certain cultures, certain individuals, genders, etc. I always challenge the very same people to tell me, what have you done to contribute to this? Because if we just sit back, I promise you, America, Europe, etc., they are not going to move. They are not concerned. It is our responsibility to write our history, our current environment, to write everything about us. It is our responsibility. Nobody else is going to do it for us. And Africanization, to me, speaks to contextualize and localize information. And we have to acknowledge certain things, that there is a Western prejudice. There is a massive gender gap. And that not all knowledges are represented. But the fact is, as long as we don't contribute to the knowledge economy in terms of our knowledge, then this will be the case. Because nobody else is going to fix this. Um, but there's opportunity for innovation and reinvent, uh, reinvention. And there's this great opportunity for using Wikipedia as a tool for knowledge diffusion and decolonization of the internet. All right. <clears throat> so Africanization is about adding content about Africa and Africans written by Africans in the language of Africans. For regional librarians, what does this mean? Please add local content. And I'm talking about specifically national African content to add content in our official languages, not just English, uh, adding local content to sister projects, like I did earlier, I showed you how you know, the, the link between um, uh, Wikipedia and Wikidata. Um, there's a Rhodes case study, and this came from Nimi Hoffman. She said, the African language department has used Wikipedia to teach translation studies. So they get undergrad students to write Wikipedia articles in easy course, on an easy course speaking to lecture or novelist who is not covered in Wikipedia. What a fabulous way to contribute to the, the, the wealth of knowledge. Then the fine arts department, interesting enough, also as part of the Arts on the Mind project, um, they use Wikipedia as a way of teaching critical African he art history by getting undergrad students to expand steps on African artists and specifically African women. Again, what a way to address someone like in this case, gender uh, or African uh, uh, focused um, knowledge. It, it's just incredible what some people actually do. All right, I'm going to quickly hand over to Ingrid to, to tell us about the Afrocene project, if that's okay, Ingrid. Sorry, I needed to unmute myself. Um, okay, so the Afrocene project is an... Um, um, it's, a, it's an annual project, normally runs in October and, and, and November, and essentially it is to, to contribute knowledge uh, um, and make content about film, um, 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 about African cinema, theatre and arts. Um, there isn't a lot, the, the, I mean, there's, there's, we've got a thriving industry um, and there just isn't that much information. So it's it's purely these 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 film industries are poorly represented on Wikipedia. So the Afrocene project actually then wants in Wikipedians that's uh, the uh, Wikipedians. Those are people. Those are the editors to help improve the coverage of the history by by adding adding content. Um, so it's contemporary cinema articles, cinema history, biographies about about relevant personalities, and 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 so on. And it's to help bridge that content gap. There actually is a competition <laughs> that goes as part as part of this. Um, 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 but. Um, I, I just think it's such an it's it's such an important um, one to 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 contribute to. So this I think this project has been running for about three years. Um, we're not. Um, I, I mean, I see that Vainant has put UCT case study, but it actually it actually isn't a a UCT case study. I have sort of passed it on to the the you know sort of try try to get the. Um, um, guys from the Center for Film and Media Studies involved, but um, 
not very successful. So perhaps we'll try we'll try again next year. But um, AFLIA, which is the African Library and Information Associations, has um, actually um, has is actually promoting um, um, participation in 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 this um, um, to get 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 people to add to add content. Um, so Vena, that's that's it from my side, but it's one of those projects to actually to actually watch out. And if you are a film buff or if you are interested in film and cinema, perhaps that is something that you where you can where you can contribute. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. No, no, fantastic. And I, I think what, what it says, and thank you for correcting me, I didn't know it was not a UCT um, a, a case study. Um, I think what it says to me as well, and, and it's a good thing that, that uh, we to Dunster is here, because I think the university librarians also need to ensure that your um, subject specialists in the library start looking at some of these projects uh, and contributing from each institution. Can, can, can you imagine if all the institutions in, the, in, in Africa, tertiary institutions, write five sentences about uh, certain projects relating to cinema um, at their institutions and contributed towards this project. We'll have, we already have such a, you know, we'll amass so much information in such a short time. Um, yes, now thank you, thank you, uh, Ingrid, um, for that. Right, just a summary of the benefits. So, for those of you who haven't realized, Wikipedia is the largest and most used open education resource in the world. That's not resources, that should be resource. Nothing gets even close to it. It helps to increase research visibility. It helps to increase the research researcher visibility. It increases the visibility of unique collections and materials. It increases web-based referral traffic to materials curated. It's an opportunity for proactive contribution to the knowledge diffusion, especially information about and from Africa. Um, it's about contributing to authoring and or translating articles in indigenous languages, increasing the accessibility of information in languages other than English. Wikimedia projects can be considered for areas of research focus. So Wikimedia projects itself has become a uh, an area for study and there's quite a number of um, uh, grants out there, um, specifically by me, Wikimedia Foundation. And there's also Wikimedia research collaboration and funding opportunities that can be used by um, institutions. All right, uh, there's a lot of Wikimedia projects and I've I, I barely touched on them. I mean, there's so many, but I, th I think in terms of um, our environments, what's important is the wiki tongues. That's to ensure that every language in the world is represented. Um, science sources is good. Wiki site is something that, that well, we, we actually, um, we call it the One Lab One Riff campaign, um, but it has to do with adding citations to Wikipedia, which Ingrid, um, uh, mostly would, would uh, you know, uh, communicate to the rest of, of South Africa about. There's also the contest Wiki Loves X, in this case there's a Wiki Loves Africa, etc. So also look out for the various projects that's running um, together with this and how to use those projects to your benefit, whether it's national, whether it's institutional, etc. The way forward, I just want to point this out, by this is what the statement at the, I think this is the 20, 18 Wikimania, the Alden Cape Town, if I remember correctly, uh, 2018. But this was one of the things that was stated. By 2030, Wikimedia will become the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge. And anyone who shares our vision will be able to join us. And I think that says a lot because their stance already is, we're not gonna chase after you. We are really central to everything. We, you've, they've had sufficient uh, fights uh, especially with tertiary institutions, to receive uh, you know, the recognition they deserve in terms of their, their position in the knowledge economy, for them to make a statement like this and say, by 2030, you can join us if you want to, but we will be the essential infrastructure. We will be central to this whole ecosystem of knowledge. And I find it interesting because this is not something that any university can say, but we can contribute. And I always, I always tell, tell other people, please don't fight with Wikipedia. Wikimedia, use them to your benefit. Same with Google, Google Scholar, etc. All right, way forward. Get involved in your local Wikimedia chapters. I'm not sure how many chapters there are, there are currently in Africa. I think I know about five or six, if, I'm, uh, if I can remember correctly. Um, 
otherwise also get involved in projects. And I thought this, oh, Phoebe A is, uh, is uh, this was a very good quote. Wikipedia is pushing the venerable field of librarianship to recognize a lesson of the 21st century. Making knowledge accessible to all requires Wikipedians, librarians, academics, and citizens to work together in collaboration and community. She is a librarian. She put librarians to word second, academics third, and citizens fourth, Wikipedians first. And I just wondered whether that was intentional or not. But yeah, fortunately, academics, citizens, and librarians can all be Wikipedians. And I hope that you all become Wikipedians quite soon. All right, there's a long list of references. Uh, there's a way to join local chapters. You can look at the various chapters. There's also opportunities, and I spoke about the various projects. There's also the AFLIA Wikipedia and African Libraries project. There's contacts. I've, Ingrid, I, I've, I've put your, your contact details there as well. So if anybody wants to know more, um, I can contact you as well. Good. <laughs> uh, just a thank you from our side. Um, first of all, support from Rhodes University, especially um, my director, Nomoweta Dunster, for always supporting me, uh, Nicola, uh, for this opportunity. Um, Support from the colleagues, especially Ingrid. Uh, we're always talking and debating about things. The Image Africa team, attendees of the session, and the Wikimedia South Africa chapter. Um, yes, so from my side, thank you. I'm not sure if there's any other questions or any discussions or any uh, deliberations that you would like to enter into. Yeah, I think, Bernard, if you can send me your slides and then I can pass it on to colleagues who attended and posted in sure. our Facebook event page as well. Um, I know. Um, just a little story to share. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, it was when I'd finished my PhD. So 2013, I mean, and then it happened sort of after that, there was a postgrad student that had curated um, a list of game studies scholars in different countries. Mm -hmm. And there was someone editing a book and he was looking for, you know, game studies in the global south and came across this uh, Wikipedia page where the student mentioned my name. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. So just an interesting little, you know, just also reflecting on, you know, I think how Wikimedia uh, and Wikipedia entries have sort of in impacted my own scholarship. Um, mm -hmm. that that was a very important sort of networking tool. Oh, stunning. That, that's so good to hear. Oh. Any other questions? Um, I see very, very uh, positive feedback. Thank you, everybody. Um, so we've got a evaluation form for some feedback on the session that Irene has shared. I can post it again. We'd love some feedback from you about the session. It's really, really short. So please um, com complete it for us. Yeah, and lots of thanks. People saying thanks for the eye-opening session. Oh, thank you. We do long live for comedians. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. Oh, what I haven't told, um, what I haven't spoken about is the fact that some institutions like Cambridge, uh, Oxford, etc., they actually have Wikipedians in residence, which is a permanent position to to use uh, Wikipedia to the benefit of an institution. Um, we don't have to go that way yet, please. Uh, I think, in my view, librarians this should be a normal aspect of our job and not something that one has to specialize in and to create a specialized a specialist position for. Um, but yes, um, I want, if, if I may ask, uh, for Marine, I'm a believer now. Oh, that's stunning. Um, but especially Joyce, because Joyce mentioned initially that she wanted to know how to use Wikipedia in uh, going forward. And I just wanted to ask anybody else that might have no contact previously with uh, Wikipedia, um, is there any way we can help with? Is there anything that, that you picked up in the session that you can immediately take back. Um, so yes, any feedback will be will be great. Um, a lot more thanks, thanks, thanks. But I, I, th I think, uh, Nicola, what, what it does say, uh, getting information back is maybe we need to look at how do we structure this at Rhodes and at these other institutions? How do we get this formally part of one of the tools used to support teaching, learning, and research at Rhodes. 
Yeah, and at all institutions. I mean, every university across Africa, um, you know, everywhere there, there are experts and people with also, you know, translation skills. Um, I can imagine. Okay, I see Ingrid's hands up. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, go for it, Ingrid. Sorry, I'd almost forgotten what I wanted. What I wanted to say. Um, um, the um, there's 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 a lot to 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 get people to actually um, think differently about Wikipedia. Um, I think currently with this the move to emergency to to online to online teaching the emergency teaching the way that maybe um, um, courses are structured or assignments are structured Wikipedia could actually could actually um, um, you know doing an assignment on Wikipedia from Wikipedia would be a, a really good would be a really good um, um, way to way to go and that was when I I did that teach when when we did that presentation at the teaching and learning conference the uct one um that was the you know sort of that was the thinking behind that that if somebody attended that and walked away thinking ah, i need to think about this differently then then in fact i think our job is done um, um there's a lot of support out there um, um there is a Wikimedia education um, section, not just the not 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 just what what Vainan showed you, um, because they kind of focus very much on the states and on Canada. But the resources are readily available. Um, there are there are support structures out there within Wikipedia, and then I had mentioned the um, the. Um, um, the Wikimedian in, in residence. And, and that is, um, I mean, one of our colleagues, um, Vainant Bobby is from, is on the, um, is, is the U, is, is the Wikimedian in residence in, at the, at the, at the UNDP. Um, um, it just means that there is time for those guys to kind of focus on doing the teaching, doing the editing, doing the support, um, and, and not having it sort of competing, competing, competing is probably the wrong word, competing in inverted commas, um, with, with, with our other, with our other duties. Um, but, but yes, um, that's it. Thank you, Ingrid, for that as well. Um, from our side, really, I, I appreciate all the incredible, uh, wonderful feedback, positive feedback. Um, and I will send the PowerPoint to Nicola to uh, distribute. Uh, and please build on it. Um, you would have noticed a Creative Commons license. Please use it, build on it, and create knowledge on top of it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Vainant, and for everyone for attending. Um, it's really refreshing to see that you know so many Rhodes colleagues have also joined um, and uh, UCT and elsewhere all over. So thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Uh, no more questions then from our side. Thank you. Go well. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.